What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today I'm gonna to put together for you what I would call the perfect bicep workout. Continuing the series, and we're gonna put heavy science into what we do as we always do, and as a matter of fact, we're gonna break out, as always, the muscle markers to show you why this becomes the perfect bicep workout. And in order to be called that, I feel there's six requirements that we have to make sure we nail to be sure that we're covering all aspects of bicep training. So let's get through those one by one. We're actually gonna use these muscle markers to help us do that. So right off the bat, we do understand that the biceps is a two-headed muscle. So it means we have a shorter head here and a long head, which is the inner bicep and the outer bicep. Well, there's more to it than that. First of all, the muscle markers help us to actually determine where that is. You can actually see on my bicep here, right about here, how the bicep turns the corner and then it actually comes up here. And if you follow that line, you can actually start to see a little bit of that split. So if I were gonna draw it out, I would follow this line here, okay? So what we have to do is we have to understand that there are ways to actually hit the short head of the biceps a little bit more preferentially, and that is because the attachment is different than the long head. The long head actually has an attachment in the shoulder, which enables us to do some different things to influence it over the short head. Not isolate, but influence. And again, I would trace that out by going down right along here and around and up right here. And again, this has its attachment up in the shoulder. And in general, we've said that if we want to train the long head of the bicep, we could do two things. Number one, we could actually take it into more of a stretch by bringing our arm back behind our body in exercises like a drag curl like you see here. Or we could use rotation, a different function of the shoulder, to allow us to work either the short or the long head more. And that is because when we have the outer portion of our bicep more visible to you in the mirror, then you will be working more of the long head of the bicep. Whereas if we were doing exercises like here, the no money curl, where you could see more of the inside of my biceps here, then we would be favoring the short head. So we're gonna do that. But we also have to now talk about the functions of the bicep. Because in order to have a complete and perfect bicep workout, we have to acknowledge the different functions of the bicep. So we know that it's an elbow flexor, right? That's obvious. But we also should know that it's a supinator. And the reason why it supinates the forearm here is because of its connection. All you have to do is just take your finger and run it right off of the bottom of your bicep. And you should feel a big, thick tendon right in here, okay? If you follow that tendon all the way, you can actually grab it and follow it all the way around, it inserts all the way down here into the radius. So if I were to put a mark right there, we'll call that number one. The first thing is to supinate that forearm. The second thing is, as we talked about, was to bend the elbow or flex the elbow. So we could put a number two right here. Right? And then number three, we know is to actually get a full contraction of the bicep, we, we know that because it crosses the shoulder, it could actually flex the shoulder. So we put a three up here. Well, we know if we want to actually get the most out of the biceps, we're going to want to have uh, certain exercises that are going to do all this. It's going to have supination, elbow flexion, and shoulder flexion. And not just that, potentially put all these in proper alignment with each other so the line of pull is optimal. Because if I take a forearm that's pronated, we can see that the one and the two are not lined up. Whereas if I supinate it here, we can see now that the one, the two, and the three could potentially work together. So we're going to do that with certain exercises as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we have to realize that different exercises actually influence and have an effect on the strength curve of the biceps, meaning that certain exercises can influence a stronger contraction either in the beginning, middle, or the end of the biceps range of motion. I'm gonna use my forearm here as a whiteboard, first time ever with the muscle markers. We know if we do a regular barbell curl, as you see me doing here, that the strength curve is that it's pretty easy in the beginning, it gets most difficult in the middle, and it gets easiest at the end. Just like if I were to get into this position in a curl, that's the most difficult part, but this is pretty simple. Well, we also know that we could take a band, a resistance band, and do curls. So it wouldn't be that difficult in the beginning, but it would start to get hard, and it would be most difficult at the end because we know that when the bands are maximally stretched, that's gonna cause peak tension, okay? But we also know that certain exercises, like you see me doing here, the incline curl, would actually make the exercise most difficult in the early portion of the range of motion. So it peaks high, and then it drops off. Well, you can see what I've actually accomplished here is with the right selection of exercises that we're gonna put into the perfect workout, we're gonna have the representation of the most tension being directed to the biceps in the beginning, the middle, and the end across the entire workout, which is something we wanna strive for. What else do we have? Well, we guys, we know that there's another muscle here that's actually not the biceps, but it's called the brachialis. And you can see that I've already outlined the bicep muscle here, okay? Which leaves me 
with this area right here. That's not the biceps, guys. That's actually the brachialis. And I've talked about this in another video. The brachialis is very influential in terms of the width of your overall bicep when, it, when viewed from the front because it has a critical role that it plays along with your biceps. So we want to make sure that we're choosing exercises that actually influence that while we can. We're going to do that too. And then we have to acknowledge two other things, guys, and we're going to incorporate these into the workouts too. We know that there's some limitation on what exercises we can do with the biceps because we're talking about a hinge joint. While it does cross the shoulder, the long head, the hinge joint is going to ultimately make everything we do look like some variation of a curl, right? No matter what we do. So you really have to rely on intensity techniques more than any other muscle group to heighten the overall intensity and the effect of the workout. And we're going to do that and I'm going to show you many of them that you can incorporate right away into those. And then finally guys, you never forget the big exercises. Just like we did it when we did the chest workout, we still did the bench press, we still did the dips. We have to accept that they have limitations. And if you can take those limitations and plug them in with other exercises in the workout, now you have the perfect workout. So with that said guys, it's time we actually put this all together and look at what the perfect bicep looks like, rep by rep, exercise by exercise. You ready? Okay, so we start the perfect bicep workout off with the big exercise, like I said. This is actually a different variation though. It's a cheat curl, and it's not just a cheat curl. It actually goes into a drop set for a barbell drag curl. Let me explain. When we start with the cheat curl, we're giving ourselves an opportunity to create great overload. That's why these big exercises work so well. And not just overload, but actually a great eccentric overload, because we're actually cheating a little bit through the concentric. And when we do that, we actually have also set up here a little bit of a mechanical drop set. So it's not just a regular drop set, but we know that we can take the same weight that we've just used, and by shortening that moment arm, by taking our elbows from this position out in front of our body to back here into a drag curl, we're still able to keep the reps coming. And by doing that, remember, the position of the elbows back behind the body, we're achieving another one of those goals of ours, and that is to now hit the long head a little bit more preferentially. So in that first combo, we take the first exercise to failure, immediately go into the second portion of it, the drag curl, and take that to failure as well, rest, and then come back and try to do three total sets. Okay, we move on to the next combo here, and it's actually another one of those heavy exercises that gives us the option to overload the biceps. Probably my favorite of all time, I've talked about it before, it's the weighted chin-up. Now again, it's not just doing that, it's doing something else that's very important. We already talked about it's it hitting all three functions of the bicep, right? We know that in order to grab the bar and pull, we're gonna be flexing the elbow. We also know that in order to get into this chin-up position, we have to have a supinated forearm. So we're getting there and having that action of the bicep as well. And we also get the action at the shoulder, right? The one that actually helps us to get to peak contraction of the biceps because we have our arm out in front of our body to grab the bar. So we're hitting all three functions. That's good. What we can do is we load it up here. I got 90 pounds of doing heavy, maybe four, five, or six reps, but I take it to failure and I immediately strip the weight off and I go into a drop set. So now we jump back up, we talk about intensity techniques. We could do that here as well. This is the peak contraction chin up. What we're doing here is using this as a burnout to the previous set where we're only going to focus on repping out in that final contracted state of the biceps because we know that we already have all three components in place. So let's linger there and do as many as we can to failure, again, an intensity technique that takes the normal training to another level because we realize we're limited again by the options for bicep training. So while we're talking about limitations, remember when I told you that the benefits of those big exercises like the barbell curl and the weighted chin up can't be ignored and we have to include them? But well, we also have to be willing to accept that there are some limitations. And to me, that is the fact that in both exercises, there's no active supination being resisted. Meaning, that in both exercises, I'm isometrically grabbing in a supinated position, but I'm not going through the act of supination against resistance, which means that we have to address that. And we can do that with the exercise I'm gonna show you here called the banded dumbbell curl. But what's even better is, I don't have to stop there. We can take advantage of this right here. Those strength curves, remember that I drew on my forearm like a whiteboard, we can do that again. We can take the dumbbell curl that peaks and then dies off, and we can add a band to it that picks up right where it dies off, and it continues. So we can actually have the benefit of having an exercise that's more difficult, placing more tension on the biceps throughout the range of motion. So here's what we do. We grab a band, we grab the, the dumbbells, and we actually curl them together. I've demonstrated this here for you before. It's an amazing exercise that if you haven't tried it, you're gonna wanna do. If you do this perfect workout, you're gonna be doing it. You're gonna be doing it actually three 
resets to failure. Again, I don't know how much that is, but you're not gonna wanna go and grab light, light weights here. You're gonna wanna grab somewhere that's gonna make you fail in the 10 to 12 rep range and back off just a little bit from there, realizing that now adding the band to this is gonna make this exercise more difficult. Okay, so of course we wouldn't wanna leave one third of that range of motion unaddressed. We can actually choose an exercise that's going to impact and overload that front side, that beginning portion of the range of motion to complement this entire sequence. We could do that with the incline dumbbell curl. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is it's not just serving one purpose. We now also, because of the position of the arm back behind the body, have just placed a little bit more stress on the long head of the biceps because it is on more stretch. Now, we can take that even further with another intensity technique like I mentioned all along here, and that is actively contracting the triceps because we know that when we do that, we can antagonistically shut off or at least allow for a greater stretch of the biceps and therefore a stronger contraction coming out of the bottom of the dumbbell curl. So you do now three more sets of this till failure and we move on to the last combo so we can round out this entire workout. So we wrap it all up here with our dumbbell bicep curl combo. It's a trifecta actually, it's three exercises and it's going to do a few different things for us. Number one, we keep the set going so we're gonna have definitely an intensification of what we normally do with straight 12 reps and be done. Number two, we're gonna work the rotation of the shoulder to take advantage of what we talked about in the very beginning, whether we're going to more heavily influence the long head or the short head of the biceps by what we're looking at. And then finally we're gonna hit that all important brachialis that we haven't necessarily addressed yet. And the first thing we do is we do this supinated cross body curl. And you can see when I supinate and come across the body, what are we looking square at right here? The long head, the outer head of the bicep, right? And you can feel that contraction as you squeeze and supinate right here, how it's more heavily influencing that outer portion of the bicep. What we do again now is we don't stop there. Instead, we go for our second rep and now we pronate and lift up this way. When we pronate, we've taken away one action of the bicep, which actually now shifts the load to the elbow flexor, which is the brachialis. And of course, we can feel that right here more than ever. Now we do that and we don't stop there again. Why? We wanna intensify this and make this even more difficult. And we actually wanna now take the opposite rotation of the shoulder. Instead of coming and rotating in, now we rotate out, external rotation of the shoulder, but does something else. What is it doing? It's squarely revealing the inner head of the bicep, which is the short head. And you can feel that contraction more on the inside here. Again, not isolating, but influencing. You can feel that here. So now you take it up and you alternate these, these positions from one, to the other and to the other. So 24 total reps. You do this two times, guys, and I promise it's the perfect way to finish out the workout. And more importantly, we've addressed every one of the concerns that we had in the beginning to make sure we could call this the perfect bicep workout. So there you have it, guys. There's a workout that I want you to try. You should feel your biceps like never before because we've addressed every single component of bicep training all in one selection of exercises. And that's the thing. You don't have to sit here and bang out your workouts for hours and hours at a time. If you choose the right exercises and apply the right techniques, you can get a hell of a lot from your workouts in a much shorter period of time. That's what we always stress here at AthleanX. And of course, we always put the science back in strength to do so. If you're looking for a complete program, head to AthleanX.com and get one of our AthleanX training programs. In the meantime, if you like the muscle marker videos guys as always make sure you let me know and leave your comments and thumbs up below and if you haven't already subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss one of our videos here especially as we cover more of these perfect workouts in this series all right guys i'll talk to you again soon see you